Okay, dude, if you had told me at the beginning of this arc, we'd have Magna fighting Dante by himself and actually have a chance of winning, I would have told you, yo, no, there's no way. And yet here we are at that point where Magna is facing off against Dante alone, and he actually has a chance of winning this fight. Like, Tabata really pulled out the biggest surprise of the entire arc with this chapter. I might be more excited for this upcoming fight than I was when Asta revealed his Devil Union. That's how hype this moment is. And I really cannot wait to talk about it, so let's just jump right into the chapter. Okay, so I want to actually start off by talking about the beginning of the chapter with that moment between Asta and Nock, because that moment was actually kind of nice, it was actually kind of heartfelt. It reminded me a lot of the moments between Asta and Yami after our fight, because it really does kind of show like the student-master relationship between the two characters. In fact, it even goes as far as Nock jokingly threatening to uh, basically beat up Asta in this chapter, just like Yami usually does. And this actually kind of goes to the point that Asta actually makes in this chapter where he says that Yami and Nock are actually a lot alike. Which personally I do kind of agree with, even though for some reason in this chapter, Nock actually compares himself to Asta instead. Which, I don't really see the connection there between those two characters. I mean, yeah they're both connected to devils, and yeah both their magic and anti-magic colors are black. But other than that, there's no real similarities between the two of them. The only thing I can think of that Nock actually means in this part of the chapter is that during the moment when he's saying that to himself, he's having like a little mini flashback to him hanging out with Yami. So maybe it's because of the fact that Asta looks up to Yami so much. Maybe back when they were younger, Nock looked up to Yami as well. And that's kind of what the comparison is. Other than that, I don't really see what he's comparing it to with him to. Now we end up finally getting the reveal of what the limit of Asta's double union is. So based on this chapter and this chapter alone, it seems like Asta can use the transformation as many times as he wants in a single day. He can last for about 5 minutes in that transformation, and then after that he has to rest for 30 minutes in order to recover. And also during that 30 minute time where he has to recover, he can't use his black form either. So he is basically now for the next 30 minutes stuck at his base. So to put it into more context, Asta's Devil Union actually has kind of like the same drawback that the Master UI'd had on Goku at the end of the Tournament of Power. Yeah, it makes him very OP on stage compared to everyone else, but once it runs out, it has a huge, painful drawback to his body. And now that Nock knows that he has to wait 30 minutes before Asta can recover, he kind of realizes, well, you know, holding off the Dark Triad for 30 minutes is going to be tough. It's doable, but it's going to be very tough to do. But they don't really have a choice in this matter because of the fact that Asta is pretty much the only person, at least as far as he's aware, Asta is the only one who's capable of taking down any of the Dark Triad members. I mean, of course, we already know that Yuno's going to take down Xenon, and Noel's going to take down Vanica. But as far as Nock knows, he is the only one who can win this fight. But there's really two big things wrong with that plan that he has. For one, he, I don't think he realizes how time-consuming this is going to be. Because, alright, he has to wait 30 minutes before Asta can recover. Then once he recovers, if he goes and fights Dante, say that fight lasts for 5 minutes. Then he has to recover again for another 30 minutes before he can go and fight the next Dark Tribe member. And then so on and so forth. He has to wait five or wait thirty minutes after that fight before he can go fight the third one. So that's an hour and a half wasted. That's an hour and a half of the ritual being able to progress. And I mean, also, who's to say that in the next thirty minutes, while Asta's trying to recover right now, another devil is not going to actually end up coming out of the next gate that Asta is going to have to fight off against? So if he actually ends up having to fight off against that devil instead of focusing on the Dark Triad, it's just going to end up being an endless cycle of him fighting off the devils while the Dark Triad continue to do what they do. What Nock's plan should be is to go down and take care of Morris. You guys remember Morris? The character who Nock was so gun ho about taking out because he was accelerating the ritual? Why isn't he target number one right now? I mean, especially since Asa can't use his Devil Union, which he needs in order to defeat Dante or any of the Dark Tribe members. He can't defeat them without it, but I can guarantee you, even in his base form, Asta could whoop Morris's ass. Anyway, speaking of Dante, we actually cut back over to the fight between him and Jack, and man, Jack's going through it right now. Which I mean, on the one hand, he is fighting against 100% Dante, so this was kind of a fight that none of us actually really thought he was going to end up winning, but I do have to hand it to him because of the fact that in this chapter, he is still swinging, he's still fighting, he's not doing any real damage to Dante, but he's still fighting, and at no point in this chapter do we actually ever see him officially take an L. And then this is when we get the biggest surprise of, like I said, the entire arc, Magna and Zora showing up to save Jack, which man, when they showed up, I, I, I mean, I knew. I knew that they were actually close by. We all knew because of the fact that in, I want to say, the last chapter or the chapter before that, we saw them in the background just watching over Asa's fight against the Fused Love. So we knew that they were close by. But when it came down to it, I actually kind of figured that we would not be seeing them anywhere near this soon. I honestly thought the bottle actually hold off on showing them until the entire squad was in the Spade Kingdom. Now, obviously, even though they're here, Dante doesn't even see them as, you know, 
worth being bothered with. He tells them basically straight up for Nirmana that they are too weak for him. They're not on his level. And he even gets arrogant to the point where he tells Magna, hey, listen, attack me as much as you want. Hit me as much as you want. And then once you're satisfied, get the fuck out of here because you can't do anything to me. You're not even worth my time. You're not even worth killing. But this is where Dante fucked up because Magna ends up drawing, which at first looks like a normal fireball. But we end up finding out it's actually his brand new technique, Hidden Fire Magic, Soul Chain Deathmatch, which, yo, that name alone sounds dope. But we end up finding out that this actually is a chain that links between the two of them. And basically, once the chain is linked, it combines their magical energy, adds it up, and then divides it equally between the two of them. So now Dante is down to 50%, and Magna got a major power boost. And yo, this magic is crazy. I mean, I definitely did not see Magna showing up after the time skip with this ability. And I kind of figured that since, and I actually have said it in multiple reviews, I figured that since Magna was training with Zora for the six months, since Zora has his own version of Mana Method, he'd be learning that from him since he couldn't really figure it out over in the Heart Kingdom. And what makes this even crazier is that Tabata actually foreshadowed him having this ability all the way back in Chapter 9 after they defeated Heath Christ when he had him chained up with his fire chains. Now back then his fire chains could only seal off a person's magic, which this is a major upgrade from that. Which honestly, I had almost forgotten that he could even do because of the fact that pretty much since that fight, we have never seen Magna use that ability. And you know what? It's really cool that the bot is actually going back all the way to the beginning of the series to find inspiration for brand new techniques for characters like this. But I kind of wish he would have foreshadowed more by having Magna use his ability more than once because a lot of fans completely, like myself, completely forgot he had this. If it wasn't for someone pointing out on Twitter prior to me reading this chapter, I would not even known that Magna had used that ability all the way back in chapter 9. Oh, and we also see during a flashback in this chapter that apparently Magna and Zora were really close by when Dante was actually fighting off against the Black Bulls outside of Spade Kingdom, but they didn't get involved because Magna's brand new technique, this technique he's using in this chapter, wasn't complete yet, so he kind of knew that they'd actually end up just getting in their way. But anyway guys, that's it for this week's chapter. Now I am actually really fucking hyped to see exactly how this fight plays out, which I'm hoping Tabata does not skip it. I'm hoping we just go to the fight in the next chapter and we get to see Magna squaring up against Dante and seeing how well Magna does. Now, I don't actually think Magna's going to win this fight. I'm pretty sure what Tabata's doing is basically just having Magna fight off against him long enough for Asa to recover so that he can show up in his dark form, or not his dark form, in his double union form. And then we can finally have a rematch between Dante and Asa that we kind of all been waiting for. But still, after being gone for about two years from the story, it is going to be cool as hell to see our boy Magna finally fighting again. But anyway guys, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about the chapter. Did you enjoy seeing Magna's brand new technique? Did you actually see the foreshadowing ahead of time? Or was that a surprise to you in this chapter? Let me know in the comment section down below. But that's it for the video guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Comment down below your thoughts and theories and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.